Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the stablecoin supply ratio. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the stablecoin supply ratio is, of course, maybe not the most interesting metric to cover, but we do have thousands of different charts here on the website, and occasionally it's worthwhile to go through one of them just to sort of check in to see where it is. Now, if you're not familiar with the stablecoin supply ratio, I will scroll down so you can just sort of read the description and look at the usage of it. But to summarize, it is basically just equal to Bitcoin's market cap divided by the stablecoin market cap. And the reason why we're interested in this is because it essentially shows you the sort of the stablecoin buying power um, and, and estimate the potential of that buying power to actually move the price of Bitcoin. So we've talked about this, I believe, a couple of times this year. And we're going to look to see where we were previously and then where we are today. Now, while the stablecoin supply ratio is an interesting metric, there's, a, there's another way that you can look at it, and that's to look at the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator. When you look at this, okay, we're going to hide the stablecoin market cap, you have the, the, the Bitcoin market cap over here, and then you have something called the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator. Now, the oscillator is basically me is used to measure the amount of standard deviations that the stablecoin supply ratio is from its 200-day moving average, right? This is where we use the, um, the Bollinger Bands. But you can see the SSRO goes through a somewhat familiar pattern. And it is interesting that the high on this metric is essentially identical to the high in 2019, four years ago. Now, we spoke first about the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator this year. Well, I mean, we probably spoke about it in 2022, I believe, as well. But when we first spoke about it this year, it was, <coughs> it was approximately six months ago. Um, so, you know, back in, in sort of the March, Mar February, March, April timeframe. And you can see where it was. And we were sort of talking back here about how it could go up to where, the, to where it was in, in 2019 and ultimately reverse course and go back down. We then touched base on this a few months later where we noted that it had gone back up to exactly where it had went to where it had gone in 2019, but there was a nuance to it, right? There was a nuance to it. And we talked about this nuance when we, sort of when we spoke about how it pertains to price action. And the nuance is that in 2019, the high on the SSRO did not actually correspond to the high in price by Bitcoin, right, for that year. We had one final push to the upside. Just like in 2021, the high on the SSRO did not occur to the high in Bitcoin. We had one more leg up. But you can see that after Bitcoin took out the prior highs in both cases, it then started to fade back down as we got into the second half of the year. And this is why I, I tell people quite frequently that my expectations in pre-having years are we spend half the year going up and half the year going down because that's what we've done. That's what we did in 2015. That's what we did in 2019. That's what we did in 2011. That's normally what we do. And, and I mean, we can always come up with reasons for it, but that historically is what has happened. Now, what's interesting is that you will also notice another trend with the SSRO. You can see again in 2019, it topped out at the same spot that it went into in 2023. Now in 2021, it did go just a bit higher. But even in 2021, that did not mark the top. We had one more big push higher to finally mark the top. <coughs> so what's interesting though, is that the low that it came down to before reversing course to go to new highs was the same level that it went to in 2021. Now in 2021, price did continue to go down for a couple of months, but we ultimately saw a big reversal out of it and we put in new highs. So what level is that? Because that level might give us some insight into where there could be a major trend reversal in the future. Now in the short term, right? I mean, in the short term, price action can do all sorts of things. We talked about how you know Bitcoin can always go back up near its bull market support band and get rejected. Normally that's what it does. After it falls below it, it'll back test it. You know, the bulls are gonna, are gonna give it a go and they're gonna make sure, they're gonna knock on the door and see if it's open. 
Uh, I imagine the bears are not going to want to open it, but we will, of course, see. But what you'll see here is that the SSRO came down to the same level here in March of 2020 that it came down to in November of 2021. And in both cases, it eventually led to new highs, right? In March of 2020, we were, you know, we, we basically just started a rally to new highs. In 2021, we, of course, started a rally to new highs as well once we hit this level. Now, we also hit this level in 2018, but it did not start a rally to new highs, but it did at least start a, a significant rally where we had a major trend reversal. So I suppose the argument here is perhaps the next major trend reversal for Bitcoin could not occur until after we go back down to these levels on the SSRO, somewhere thereabouts, right? So you can see in 2021, once we hit this level in, in late May, it still took a couple more months for Bitcoin to really uh, get the memo and, and start moving back up. In March of 2020, uh, it was, you know, it was essentially immediate. In December 2018, it was about a week, you know, about a week or two before Bitcoin actually saw that, that trend reversal. But in all cases, in all cases, we did see a trend reversal in fairly short order. And so that might be the level to watch <coughs> if Bitcoin, in fact, does spend the second half of the year going down in line with prior expectations for price performance of Bitcoin in pre-having years, then perhaps that level will be the level to ultimately look at. I mean, you know, if you're looking for sort of a number on it, you can see that here in 2021, it was negative 2.76. In 2020, it was negative 2.52. In 2018, it was negative 0.287. So in all cases, it's been between about negative two and negative three. Right now, this value is at 0.114. Okay, it's not even it's not even negative right now. So it does show you that there is still a a a, a large risk of Bitcoin continuing its downtrend into the end of the year, right? And we talked about this before, right? We talked about how you know, 2018 saw a bear market. We then saw, you know, sort of a having year rally followed by about a nine month bleed before the real bull market began. 2022, we saw a bear, you know, a year, a year long bear market followed by a, a, a having year rally that then likely leads into this downtrend that we're in right now that could last, you know, for potentially six, nine months for all we know. You know, it's not, <coughs> it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be any different, right? I mean, <clears throat> so far, things have more or less played out how we might have expected, right? Because we, we talked about Bitcoin going up for half the year, going down for half the year, and, and that is a general expectation. And so we will see if that plays out. But, you know, at this point, I think what we're looking at here is, you know, the SSRO has, has sort of come down to these levels that it's trying to hold on to. But history shows that when, when it's starting to come down like this, we tend to see it drop a lot more. Right, we tend to see it drop, a, you know, quite a bit more, in fact, before it actually bottoms out. And so while we are in the middle of, you know, of, of a move by Bitcoin back up to the upside, right, we're, we're back up above $26,000. And, you know, it's always possible it, it goes just a bit higher. I still would argue that there is a very strong risk, again, of Bitcoin sustaining a downtrend for the rest of the year. And, and this metric would agree with that assessment, right? Uh, uh, the idea of a, of a downtrend for the rest of the year by Bitcoin. And, and you know, again, as I, as I said previously, right, you know, when we were when we were at 25k, uh, we did a video on the bull market support. And I said, you know what, when when prices suppress, right, when it's been going down for, for four weeks in a row, three or four weeks in a row, it's easier to sort of have these discussions, because we know at some point, we're going to get a week where we rally back up to the bull market support. And so let's have the discussion before that happens. Right? And we said, look, guys, at some point, even during a downtrend, you will see a surge back up to a lower high. Um, and so far, that is, is of course, <coughs> what my expectations continue to be, right? It's just sort of a, a, a likely just a, a secondary move back up to the upside, only to see some form of rejection, followed by a, a lower low based on this 24.8K, 24.8K, a lower low than that sometime, you know, before, you know, within the next couple of months or so, probably before then, right? But that is, is, is my general expectation. Um, I've been clear about that and like, I could be wrong, you know, I mean, I, a lot of people say, well, you know, what if you're wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, it won't be the first time. Uh, it'll just, we'll add it to the long list of things I'm wrong about, but that is my expectation. 
I try to provide the data and the reasoning for why I think that. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But those are my views on the market. Hopefully you enjoyed them. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.